Welcome back, darlings. This week's video is an in-depth look at the Arva P57 Easy and where it's applicable on comparing it to Nilfisk. This is a long video. Uh, there's no way I can make this short. But then this is £300, give or take, and it's a lot of money. And therefore, I feel like it's worth spending the time having a, a thorough in-depth look. I expect this video to be the definitive answer as to whether this is any good. Right, so we've got the Arva P57 Easy and the Nilfisk C135i. Now, this is the one that comes with the extra, extra like that as well, um, and that means it's got the patio cleaner, uh, which also comes with an additional uh, extension bar. So we could get into that. Um, now, in terms of what I have as an extra on the Arva, the only thing that is extra here is the patio cleaner so that's their slimline patio cleaner i do have the premium foam cannon with the big um milk shaker bottles however it does actually come with one of those as standard okay it's got the stubby bottle on it but it is the same lance so uh there's something that's worth bearing in mind there i've got that to review for separate things let's now have a look around these two in a bit more uh detail Something to point out right now, by the way, is that the C135i is not the direct competitor for the P57, not in price or power. Um, that would be the E150 from Milfisk. That has the built-in hose reel, and it has a few other features as well, like the collapsible handle. Very similar to this. Different design, but very similar concept and similar price point as well. They're all around the 300 pound-ish mark. This is around the 150-ish. Um, so this is 130 bar, this is uh, 145, I believe. One thing to point out though is this and the E150 have an induction motor, which is brushless, which is why these things weigh an absolute ton. And these kind of use brushed universal motors. That is in line with the new core series from Nilfis that have the inbuilt reels. Okay, a lot to work out. But it's a, still a pertinent test. And the thing I'm going to be particularly interested in here is kind of comparing the accessories as well. Uh, so let's get into having a look at the devices in a bit more detail. A detailed look. Right. One of Arva's big things is its ergonomics and the way it's designed and uh, the way everything's stowed away. But Nilfisk are very good at this as well. Now let's have a look at the Arva to start with. Firstly, you've got your 12 meter hose on there. Uh, built in, it is user replaceable and it's easy to do. Just a couple of screws on the side here. You undo things, clips out, you can swap it off, put it back in. That's very important and worth bearing in mind. The um, the one on the C130, uh, it doesn't, isn't connected, so you have to unreel it and then connect it to the uh, pressure washer outlet. That's why I don't use it on top, it's useless. Although it was the pull handle, this thing normally sits inside my van, so it doesn't matter. Um, on the E150, it has a collapsible handle and the hose reel is connected on to the uh, water supply. So you can, you just re unreel it and wind it back up and use it from there. That's a good thing. However, it's only a nine meter hose. So we're gonna look at that in a bit more detail a bit later because uh, the E135 came with an eight meter hose. We'll do a comparison there. Now let's look at the rest of the storage. So firstly, got the uh, premium foam cannon. This is a really good cannon. I might do a separate review of it, but I am going to do a demonstration in this video of that. Um, and this has its own little place to live on here. It even has a little uh, icon on here, which tells you what it's for. It folds down, tip it up. Bearing in mind, these are Karcher K-Series um, quick release. They're nice and easy. Tip it up, put it in, it's on. It's really secure. Over here, we've got um, the brilliant, brilliant Vario Lance, which comes as standard on this. And if you've not seen this before, just twist it out and you get a really good reach. Um, that's well documented in the world of Arva, so most people know about that. There is a hole, which I'll bring the camera around in a minute, so you can see um, for it to, the end of it to rest in here with the nozzle on if you wanted. Um, and it also clips in up here, so it's really sturdy and it, it won't move when you're wheeling around. Also, Arva's party trick, of course, is being able to rest the uh, and clip in the uh, cannon, or well, the, the whole gun lance assembly, even with the foam cannon on the end, uh, 
as and when you want to and it's super stable and doesn't wander off there's also up the top here stowage that's not the accessory i'll come back to that later stowage for the lance heads so that's the turbo one that comes with this a standard this is your vario 60 and 20 degree one which you can also combine to do a rinse uh, which has low low pressure so those stow up there all very nicely and of course uh, here is your easy gun so is your stubby gun i think this is such a nice touch the stubby gun because you can then plug these accessories directly into there same with the foam can and anything actually anything cartridge k series also interestingly the hose on this goes in the middle of the gun so you'll have the hose the in water in that goes there this is their special easy force gun which means you've got this little uh trigger here i'll bring that and do a bit more detail on that a bit later that's not a gimmick i thought it was but it isn't um and then you can yeah, put your accessories straight onto there so you've got a stubby gun without having to buy one that can also rest in there pretty useful there's a spin you around you can see uh you've got your power cable and water inlet in the, on the back so that's water inlet there power cable it's quite nice that these flip down and up as well so you can just pull it straight off nice and easy the e150 has something similar though uh, it might be on the side but it has a similar concept so whilst it's useful it's not unique uh, and then the folding way the way all this stows away is is pretty straightforward but it does expose a problem so take all the nozzles off take the lance out push the button up lift it up down to tip it forward push it up and it's stowed okay now you've got a problem nice and compact really easily balanced quite light as well this handle is actually yes yeah, very sensible however You're left with stuff you can't stow on board. So you have to find somewhere different for all those. So that is a negative for me. Yes, I can put the, um, the lance back on, put a nozzle on the lance, stow it like this. It's not very secure. It's pretty wobbly. I'd be worried that this would stress the plastic here over time. You might think, okay, we'll just take off the, um, the nozzle so you can be a little bit deeper in. Yeah, sure, this is designed to fit a little bit, but still, this isn't really designed to be here with this on. It is designed for the gun to be stowed there. Okay, that's what that's for. So, you are left with these bits that you need to find another home for. It's not inherently a massive problem, but I want to draw your attention to it. For the sake of comparison, let's go and have a look at the Nilfisk. Now this clearly isn't an E150 as I've said before, however the design language across Nilfisk's pressure washers are consistent. So looking at the accessories, looking at the way the tools are stored, that is going to be a good thing we can look at here. Now my C130 usually has this uh, hose reel on the top, but the hose doesn't connect to the pressure washer so you have to unreel it and connect it. The E150 does, but it's not a usable serviceable part and to me that's a bit of an issue. Um, it does, however, have a telescopic handle that's usually on the back, as you saw in the earlier picture. So much like the Arva, there is a handle that can be increased in height to make it more portable and stored away when you don't want to take up space. Let's kind of look around the back here. So you can see the lance, the trigger gun, the detergent dispenser, and the two different types of nozzles are all stowed and they're stowed all of the time, regardless of how the thing is configured. That is exactly the same on the E150. Okay, so this detergent dispenser is pretty much useless. Uh, the draw rate is so low and the pressure it comes out at is so high that um, it, it really, it, I don't think you can even inject up to 1% PIR for that size bottle on there. I'm gonna do the proper test later to have a look at it, so we'll, uh, we'll know for sure, but um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty hopeless. However, Let's have a look at the, the gun, the stubby gun, and then the how you connect it in and where you put all the nozzles in. In fact, I got the wrong piece there. That Because I got the extra, the um, spelled with an X at the beginning, because it's got the patio head and stuff, there's this bridging connector. This is what you would normally get, and this is how you would normally connect in your nozzles. 
Uh, this nozzle is the standard pressure washer nozzle and it has some variance in it in terms of intensity. You just twist it to adjust. However, uh, you cannot adjust the fan width. Um, you'll see later, I'll demonstrate the different widths between that and the other one. Uh, so you can kind of turn it from a high pressure nozzle to uh, probably a detergent rinse or just a rinsing nozzle, I guess is probably the best way of describing it. Now, as I was saying, the bundled foam cannon goes on the end of that uh, long lance. However, if you want to put a um, proper foam cannon in, you would be using this part, the stubby gun with the connector in. It's a bit unbalanced and the hose still goes in at the back, so it doesn't counterbalance itself that way either. So you often find when you're putting the um, foam cannon into that part of the lance, you have to really hold the uh, the barrel of the, of the trigger as well. Uh, trying to make a proper gun analogy, but it uh, sounds pretty poor, doesn't it? However, because it has got the extra set, I've got this bridging piece in the end, when you're doing patios, it gives you kind of this longer lance, which is really useful with the turbo nozzle. So from a straight up design aesthetic point of view and practicalities, they're pretty much drawing, but because they canceling each other out in different ways. For me, the accessories you get with the Arva are far better. They're better made, they're also just more useful and better quality. The uh, spray heads are better. The detergent, uh, well, <laughs> the actual proper foam cannon is far better than that detergent thing on there. The overall design is good. The way the hose is on the side is nice. It, it sounds really odd, but with this, you've got one hose coming out the front, the um, power and the water go in on the back. It just makes sense and it's a longer hose which is a good thing i like the high vis part of the hose which from a professional point of view it's good makes it uh less likely to be sued from a trip hazard point of view so anything that helps with that is good um however when it's all collapsed down the stowage is not as good on this and that is a problem you could get the benefit of having the arverness on a nil fisk by having these accessories but then they would not fit the stowage on this However, you would have a better experience of cleaning your car because you're using these accessories rather than the bundled ones there. It swings and roundabouts, quid pro quo. I think uh, on face value, I would go with the uh, Arva because it's a nicer user experience when using it. Hose length comparison. All right, just to give you an idea. That is about a meter away from the car and slightly offset. So you get an idea for the hose length just how it's set up. And I've given the nil fist the inside line. Not that it makes a huge difference, but you know, any advantage. And this is how the hoses are run. Down the side of the car. Got the um, wheel guard there to help make sure there's no snags around here. So this is where the eight meter nil fist hose finishes. And this is where the 12 meter Arva finishes. So more than enough to get all the way around the car from one place. So you can wash the back and then go round, round the front, come back and do the rear wheel without having to move the pressure washer. Lance and nozzles. Right, easy force gun. This little black piece is the party trick. You squeeze the gun, that would be getting water flow on. And then you see that if I gently let off the pressure a little bit, this is starting to protrude. That's because I'm easing off on the squeeze. Now, all you have to do is just have resting pad pressure on that. Just, just held in your hand. You're not, I'm not squeezing this anymore. It's just gripped. And um, that is really great. In terms of, you can keep the, the flow going without having to squeeze. You may think that's a bit odd, but you just lose the, the fatigue that you get in your hand from having to squeeze the pressure washer trigger all the time. If you get that, and you know what I mean when you've been doing patios and stuff, it can get quite intense after quite a while. If you're doing your car with a big rinse down, again, it can be quite intense. Uh, is it a massive issue? No. Is it nice that they thought about it? Absolutely, yes. Let me show you the comparison, though. Here's the Nil Fisk. A, massive in comparison. But uh, more, you see that the, the, the sculpting of the pistol grip is a bit different. Like this is consistent and it's, they're, they're both hinged from the top, but this feels like you have to squeeze it quite hard. And it is quite deep, you know, like uh, it's much thicker. When even when it's out, you have to read, this is without water flowing through it, remember? When the water's flowing through, there's more resistance. This is quite hard work to keep squeezed. Again, it's not terrible, but this, 
is significantly better. So this, this hinges from here at the top, but it feels like the bottom bit is pivoting in, like going into the handle here. I can't really describe this particularly well, but this one just feels like you're pulling from here at the top rather than like a lever from the bottom. So that's a good thing. All right, so we're gonna start off with the uh, arbor and we're going to 20 degree setting and oh, ha. Had a bit of a problem when I was doing this. Turned out I had a bit of debris stuck inside the nozzle so it wasn't letting the water flow out properly. Um, however, I was able to fix it because you can tear down the entire nozzle, which is pretty impressive. And I've got a little clip of that a bit later. But for now, I'm gonna stick with the 60 degree nozzle and see how that gets on. I have to say, on the wheels, this was a real revelation. You can really kind of get deep inside the barrel. You get the nozzle in, but then it spreads out inside more. Um, I've not experienced that with smaller nozzles before. I usually use a 40 um, on my stubby gun, and that doesn't get as wide as this, obviously. Um, all the 20 and 25, so that, yeah, it's interesting to uh, experience that. Then I'm gonna just go around, because of this thought I had at that time, I'm gonna go around and do the rest of the car, rinsing it um, with that, as, uh, that fan width as well. You have to say, it's really good. Um, no, it doesn't shift as much dirt as the 20 degree nozzle. The car isn't super filthy at the moment, but it was a really nice way of rinsing down. So this is uh, rinsing off the um, shampoo stage here, and it's brilliant for that. However, don't worry, I am gonna go um, fix that nozzle and go around and have a look at the, uh, the 20 degree setting on the van a little bit later. For direct comparison though, here is the Nilfisk nozzle. Now, that is about 20 degrees as well, I believe, uh, and you can see a bit later I'll do a comparison between that and the 20 degree on the Arva. They look very similar. Uh, it's a little bit awkward to move around, but not massively. It's not hugely different to the uh, Arva in this case because of the long lances. We've so got. a real bonus of the stubby gun, ignore that, that's me, not doing a good job, is you can get into tight spaces here. So I'm gonna do the rear wheel. We can switch over to that Nilfisk. Luckily, I've put a bit more room at the end here, but you can see I haven't got like, an awful lot of space to articulate around, and this is quite a generous width. I love this user serviceability or the right to repair concept. Um, if this has been a Karcher nozzle, the Vario nozzle that they have, it cannot be stripped down and serviced and it costs 30 pounds to replace. This is three minutes worth of footage sped up to about 20 seconds. Now that that's fixed, let's have a look at the uh, different widths of the nozzle. So this is the 60 degree. Then I've got the uh, hybrid one in the middle, which is kind of for rinsing down. That uses both sprays, but at a lower pressure. And now I could go for the 20 degree one. So you can kind of keep it in that. So that's that fit, that's how I addressed it and resolved that problem with that. Then we're gonna have a look at the Nilfisk. And we're gonna start off there with the Nilfisk on uh, full power, which is here. You can see that's about 20 degrees again, and then you can wind it all the way out to get a soft kind of rinsing, detergent rinsing setting like this. It's all right, reasonably effective, does the trick. In this one, I'm just gonna show you the sheer value of that zoom lance, being able to not quite reach the other side of the roof of my van, and then suddenly being able to completely reach it. It's a game changer, it's great for SUVs and that sort of thing. Panel impact ratio calculations. I've included this footage of the Nilfisk one so you can see the real struggle I was having to get this uh, calculation because it's coming out with such force but such a mist as well, I can't get it all in the bucket. So there's clearly more than I've seen here. 
All right, to get this one completely empty, discharged about five liters of water, this one, to get it half empty, um, discharged over 10 liters, because you can see it wasn't all really going in the bucket and it was coming at a really high pressure. Um, that means with this five liter, oh, sorry, not five, 500 mil bottle, you will never be able to get more than one or 2% PIR. Snow foam cannon. All right, foam time. So I've chosen what is probably the hardest foam to demo with. Bill Hamber Auto Foam. 4% PIR. The reason I've done that is if it works with, if it's good with this, it's good with anything, right? So let's have a look. There you go, the maximum draw. I was gonna put a bit out there, I missed it. <laughs> Warm, it? Maximum draw of, with 500 mil in the bottle because it's easier to work out the PIR. That's, uh, that's covered the car. And with auto foam, because it's a lighter foam, it runs down. But I have to say, that's one of the thickest I've ever seen auto foam come up at. It's nice as well. You can see, if you've used auto foam, you know what it's like. Let's see how it dwells. In the meantime, let's swap that off. And it looks like it's given a nice wet foam. This is about two minutes after though, because I'm in direct sunlight here. You don't want to leave it to uh, dwell as long. And you can see it's just starting to dry out on the back there. So I wanted to get this rinsed off. Any foam would dry out on that hot uh, glass that's black in this case. So following day, I thought I'd give it another go. It's overcast and I've done it on the van this time. And this is why filming with the camera on your head helps because it's there all the time. You can see, suddenly, I'm shooting out water and not getting much solution. Shook the bottle around and got a bit more. I wonder why that is. Well, it turns out the draw pipe, being long, has popped out the top of the solution. And uh, I couldn't really get it to go back inside the solution. So the first day I used it, it didn't have this problem at all. The draw pipe had coiled around, stayed at the bottom, no problem. This time, I had no end of problems trying to get it to stay under the solution. So what I ended up doing was I ended up holding the kind of gun, a bit gangster, uh, uh, holding it sideways and it kept the uh, draw pipe in the solution. But that's not ideal. However, this foam cannon also has a bit of a party trick. Yep, it's got another thread inside, which means you can put on a regular bottle like this. It's not unique to this, the foam lance. I think the MJJC V2 does this. Either way, it's really handy, and it's why the draw hose is so long as well, so you can do this. In this bottle, I've got um, Super Foam by Kokemi. You can see it's a different foam, it's much thicker, and um, but I wanted to show you that lance with, with a different product, so you can really see. This, uh, again, was an overcast day. I let it dwell for about four minutes, as you can see from the timestamp. It did really well. There we go, 9.32. I started early for this one, and there we go, 9.36, four minutes later, and it's, uh, it's cleaning on well. Nice and wet still too, which is a real, uh, really good thing. This is a good sign of a good phone camera. Right, foam lance serviceability. This is a really important aspect, I believe. So it should be something that's always considered. Um, now this is their premium foam lance. It's the one that's bundled. And here is the pin with the slot in it to remove now. This takes this off to get to the filter. Important thing is you can't get to it while you're on the knob on this side, so you have to turn it around. Now you've got access to that groove. So I'm gonna do that now. And then pop that off. Really simple. And this bit here, the filter lives in there. You probably can't see it, but it's in here. Super, super easy to take apart and reassemble. Now I have that out to make those the, the bits line up inside, which they will, it will only slot in in one way. 
couple of grooves inside you just want to make sure it all lines up and then there we go I'm in back up there let's go put the pin back in there you go all done fan width all good it's not easy patio cleaning now to me, the obvious other use for a pressure washer is for cleaning a patio. So here I've got the slim head. This is part of the XL bundle for the P57. And I'm comparing that to the Nilfisk Patio Plus. Uh, so you can see here, it's a fairly generic um, patio cleaning head. It has got this kind of scrubby brush thing at that point. Does that make a difference? Don't know, we'll find out. Whereas the Nilfisk Patio Plus, which is their more premium one, and there is an Arva accessory that kind of matches this, I would say. Um, it has the flow rate adjuster and the handles, which the use case for is using it on your fence. It does make a difference in that case, but is it a big deal breaker? Yeah, I don't really think so. If you know you're gonna be doing that though, just by the other head that's got that. Here you can see uh, kind of how I'm being able to stand, how much I have to lean over. I'm six foot two, 34 inch inside leg. And um, you can see here with the Arva that I really don't have to bend over at all. And what I was really impressed by was there was no flex in that lance. I thought when it was fully extended, it might have had a bit more give in it. It didn't really. In terms of cleaning prowess, uh, I didn't really notice much difference in the end result, which you'll see at the end here. I would say I found the, um, the Arva easier to use, not because it was better at cleaning or anything, just that it was a lighter head and therefore actually much easier to handle. It didn't make it more difficult to get the results. So I think that's a good thing all round. Yeah, when they said the end results, it was directly comparable. It had been pressure washed. There were still black lichen marks. <laughs> the competition. In terms of competition, I've been talking about the Nilfisk E150 the entire time, and I've been wrong. It's actually the E160, except it's not. Um, what's confused me, and I found out since making this video, I, I contacted Nilfisk to try and get an E150, realised it was an E160, and then um, they come back and said, no, we've got the excellent 160. I was like, cool, like the E160. It's not. Um, there's another one. Basically, they've they're kind of deprecated or um, stopped making the E160. They've now got this E1 or Excellence 160, which looks a bit like this. And uh, it's got some common traits with this in a way. It seems to have a stubby gun. It seems to have a better foam cannon. It seems to have a different lance. It comes with multiple nozzles again. So I am getting one of those, and I'm going to review that at a later date in a similar vein. Um, but in, in terms of the direct competition to this, so it is this new Excellence uh, 160 from Nilfisk, and then it's got the Karcher K5. Now, I read a thread the other day on one of the Facebook groups and said, oh, Arva are the best made machines. I don't think we can assert that because they're so new to the market still. They've been on the market for what, less than a couple of years. They, this particular model is kind of new to the market, although it's using the internals from something that's been on the market for a year or so. Um, you can't say these are the best made machines when they haven't been out long enough to be able to tell you if they'll last five, 10 years. That's just, I think it's just impossible. They are the best designed machines, I think, so far. We'll hold judgment again to when I get that one at the later. But I, I look at this and think the way this is all put together, this is designed to solve people's problems with pressure washers. How do you work using a pressure washer as a consumer? This does it all and they've designed it incredibly well much nicer than the Karcher, or the Karchers are probably the highest selling in terms of volume, Neil Fisk a second, Arbor are going for that second place. Um, and I see no reason why they shouldn't. So it is an incredibly good machine, well designed. Um, I would say the Neil Fisk are built like tanks. These are pretty light, you know, like I couldn't do that with a Neil Fisk. I'm not particularly strong. Um, and uh, this, is, uh, this is easy to do. But the Neil Fisk, my C130 weighs more than this does. So it gives you an idea, those induction motors are heavy. They're really solidly built. It's not to say this is rubbish. It's just, it's different. <laughs> it's a different approach to doing it. They spent more effort and money on designing the accessories. And I have to say the accessories are phenomenal. And in fact, the accessories are as why I would advise getting the Arva at the moment, because it's leagues ahead of anything else. You don't have to spend any more money, as I mentioned before. That's worth something in itself.
conclusion and warranties. There we go, in conclusion, what do I reckon? Yeah, it's good, it's really good. Um, I would say the accessories are the, the best bit about it, right? So you can use these accessories with Karcher and Nilfisk. So if you kind of want to, don't have to spend out on the new pressure washer, but you want to level up your current one, I would say rather than buying some of the other options out there, like the MTM gun and all the different vario, other stuffy lances and stuff you can get, the quick release things, I'd probably actually get this. Personally, I think this, this setup is really good. This could actually be the best foam cannon on the market. That's quite a claim, isn't it? And it's well up there anyway, and it's not too bad a value, especially when you get the one that's got the three cups in there, gives you that flexibility. That's where I go. If you are wanting to start from scratch, you don't have a pressure washer, yeah, this as a complete package is brilliant. That 12 meter hose is fantastic. No one else is doing that. Even that other Nilfisk that I mentioned, the Excellence 160 is 10 meters. Um, the Zoom Lance, I call it the Vario Lance, but the Zoom Lance, the nozzle where you can change um, and take it all apart. Of course, the serviceability I think is huge. 10 year warranty on this. And all you have to do is to, for that warranty to be valid is to service it at year five with a new seal kit, which is about 28 pounds. You can do it yourself, take up to an hour to do and clear instructions to do it. That's pretty cool, right? I think that's that's really valuable. Um, the Is there a negative to it? You don't know how long these are going to last because they just haven't been on the market long enough to have that usage data. Uh, so it's a 10 year warranty for a consumer. They also have a one month warranty for commercial, which isn't an awful lot, but it's one month more than anyone else that does with a consumer model. So yeah, something to take into consideration. I hope this has been an interesting video to you. I've enjoyed making it. Uh, I know it's thorough, <laughs> but you should be able to make a decision off the back of this. If you do want this or any of the other accessories and whatnot, they're all linked down in the description below and uh, you won't be disappointed with any of them. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.